Are you playing NSO? Are you just wanting to try and gimp yourself so you can say you're better at flying than you really are? Are you wanting to irreversibly damage your ability to fly ESFs? Well, I've got the tutorial for you. This is the Dervish. This strange dinner plate shaped device is the culmination of confusing decisions when designing a flight capable air vehicle for our resident almost robots. Rather than pick the logical route and allow NSO to bolster their forces with prior knowledge gained flying literally every other vehicle with this intended air-to-air -air role by giving us a relatively small, nimble, single-seat fighter, you are instead stuck with a relatively sluggish monstrosity that requires a second person to be viable, something that isn't always going to be the case when you're playing solo, as most NSO without membership will be. That being said, I suppose it's time to stop whining and offer you the first step on your irreversible journey. The settings. Go ahead and open up your main settings for Planetside. The first thing you're going to want to change is flight sensitivity. Set that to 0.9 or 1.0. Hi, this is the Dervish, not your regular ESF. The next thing you want to change is uh, joystick sensitivity. Enable joystick does not matter. Then set your joystick dead zone as low as it can go, all the way. Get rid of it. Upon first glance, you'll be greeted with what looks like any other ESF. You get a primary and a secondary weapon, performance, defense, and utility slots. As usual, three separate performance slots. A choice of four utilities, however, you're just going to use fire suppression, always, nothing else. When it comes to defense, net and auto repair might seem like the way to go, but honestly, vehicle stealth, this all the way. Comp is a trap, ignore comp. You might have noticed that I haven't told you what performance module to pick yet. That is very much on purpose. There are a few schools of thought when it comes to flying the dervish, and it all depends on one question. How good is your aim? If your aim's really, really good, go ahead and pick precision. If it's anything underneath the top tier echelon of what you can muster with an ESF, pick drift. Actually, I lied. If you want to fly the dervish itself, also pick drift. Precision while incredibly effective in the right hands, is not really the most fun playstyle to go with unless you're spamming the XE at people. You'll notice I haven't said anything about Rotor, and that's because uh, it's an unloved middle step child not deserving of a cult. How about we actually dive into the difference between these, huh? The first thing you'll notice about the Dervish is how wrong it feels. It's like a Valkyrie that decided to cover itself in oil. That's, that's what it is. It is a Valkyrie's flight model. I guess at one point it was a Scythe, but it was changed later. Uh, the Yaw, as you'll notice, fights you. If you tap Yaw, it will keep going for a little bit. It feels like a mouse acceleration, except now it's translated to your keys. That's not to say it's all bad. In exchange for basic ESF utilities, you don't have to juggle hover mode. It's also really, really quiet. Since optimization of the stock dervish applies to all subsequent frames, let's go over a few tips that'll be nice to have in our back pocket for later. For starters, you see that engine on the back? It's God. The dervish does not fall backwards. It never will. You'd have to be doing some ludicrous bullshit to make it fall backwards. It always wants to go in the direction the engine's going. In fact, it's so reliable that standard practice for being too close to an object is to just point your engine at it. Trust me, it'll work. If you'd like to hover for a little bit, pitch up at like 30 degrees and just leave it there. It's pretty weird. The first thing you'll notice about Precision Frame is the yell. While it's still fast, it's much, much toned down. Likewise, the roll. It's much better than the stock dervish. If you're an ESF pilot, you'll probably feel much, much more at home using precision. It feels much more like what you're used to. Albeit, uh, still an obese flying saucer. Precision's purpose is right in the name. 
By getting rid of yaw drift and decently speeding up roll rate, both you and your gunner will find this frame to be generally conducive to keeping the both of you on target at most ranges. And with practice, keeping your gunner on, even at close range. Granted, you're going to use a gunner with this frame. Against ESFs, this one stands zero chance without a few well-timed seat swaps that are outside the scope of this guide while solo. Work with your gunner to the best of your ability and prioritize giving him the shot if need be. Otherwise, use either the DV-22 Raycaster or DV-XC nose guns and the DV-22T Lightweaver turret to apply ample DPS to the most dangerous target at any given moment. Assuming your aim is true, you should kill literally anything short of a fully manned battle galaxy before they can do anything about it or can sufficiently damage you. Keep in mind, these are wholly optimistic takes. Your actual mileage is probably not going to be anywhere near that high. Drift frame takes most of what you just learned and throws it out the window, all to make ample abuse of the drift mechanic. Drift is pretty simple. In general, you build up speed when you're heading in a direction that isn't what your nose is facing. It's this that we use to move, aim, and remain on target when in combat with other vehicles. There are a few quirks you can take advantage of, as you'll now need to keep a few things in mind when flying. You'll need to know your current speed, a general idea of where you're going, what you're facing, and how high off the ground you are, along with how much afterburn you've got left. All of these combine to optimize your motion. Don't worry, after a while, you won't really be thinking much about these things. What can't be ignored, specifically, are altitude, current speed, and afterburner. Because, as a pilot better than me puts it, no pocket money, no investments, no paycheck, you're dead. If you run out of all of those in a fight at the same time, you might as well give up. I hope your aim's good at that point. Drift likes to get into a target's face and use its ability to rapidly displace while remaining on target to turn things into its own favor. Most of what I'm going to show you here can be applied to rotor, stock, and to a much more limited degree in precision, but they generally work the best on drift, so we'll be showing them off in this section of the guide. For starters, getting yourself turned around. You want to apply as many directions to your rotation as possible, but you also don't want to be standing still. There are numerous ways to accomplish this. The one shown on screen involves using descend while afterburning and pitching up, using brake to keep your motion somewhat flat, and then continuing to pitch up while ascending. You move a lot more for someone else than you appear to on your screen, and that's what you want to be doing. Another involves simply leveraging the method of building drift, and then dumping it by pitching down and into your turn as hard as you can while rolling flat. I'll leave a few examples of this playing on the screen. Speaking of that method, I might as well cover that. It's a simple straight line manner of building a burst of speed by dividing your flying into two parts. I like to call it squinting because it reminds me of that. Inhale or draw in by turning more or less on your side, and then exhale by yawing towards your raised wing, pitching down, and rolling to bring yourself flat, but not completely flat, afterburn throughout this whole ordeal. You want your lift thrusters to be pointing behind you for as much of this as possible. Don't be discouraged if this doesn't seem to work right away. Another way is to enter a wide side-on turn and then quickly tap descent and then continue ascending. Hang on, why does that work at all? Generally speaking, you want to make ample use of descent. Your descent is faster than any ESFs at any speed and you can use your afterburner to its fullest while doing it. You can easily circle a target in unexpected ways, all while keeping both you and your gunner on target. Against liberators, alternating between ascend and descend while spiraling around them leaves them at the vast majority of Valkyries and galaxies without an answer to your capabilities. You'll want to use the DV-21 Lotus and the Lightweaver and DV-Sat as weapons. As much as you can manage, make use of everything in your toolkit. 
Never pick a direction that doesn't make sense. You want the shortest path to the enemy you can manage, and you always, always want to be jockeying for an advantage against any craft in a manner that allows you to get into a position that they can't make their own out of at any given moment. If you're out of your depth, simply yank the fight back into your own clutches with clever maneuvering. Boosting and descending simultaneously is generally foolproof and should be your go-to method in most fights. This is effective against everything. Just be careful with Dawn Liberators. Generally speaking, you want to be making reads. You've got to more or less predict where the fight is going and do what you can to get it to favor you. This requires more footage than I have the space for. It's going to be hard one with raw experience. There will probably be a second piece of this at some point in the future, which also includes a review of Rotor. Just know that at the moment, it's not really anything you'd want that doesn't also give some sort of opportunity caused elsewhere. It's good at holding down a specific spot and can use the same moves to build speed as drift, but it doesn't get to hold on to it and you're going to be even more screwed if you play a dump and run out of boost. However, play with it as you'd like. It might surprise you. All in all, you shouldn't really fly this. If you're playing NSO, however, you've got no choice. And if you're playing solo for some godforsaken reason, you've got a ways to go to be better than most ESF pilots you meet in your trade. Maybe one day your realm will give us an actual ESF. I learned this out of hate and spite that it is dang for Banshee Mosquitoes and Air Hammer Reavers. I don't actually like this play. I think I'm the only dervish pilot that does it. I outraxed it to learn its secrets in hopes that maybe out there was some sort of tactic I can use that'd be foolproof against ESFs. There isn't. Unironically, this is one of the dumbest vehicles in the game, and the fact that there's no real solo option for NSO is utterly stupid. Special thanks to all of the pilots that debated me over random things regarding each weapon and provided insight onto what they saw as the optimal strategy for this game. This has been stagnant for an obnoxiously long time. I'm glad to have it done. Special thanks to Shizaku and Pizza or Mold for taking the time to tutor me on what moves to make and what motions to take advantage of. And thank you for all the people who held still for just long enough for me to kill you and get the RX on my weapons. And to Rail for implementing a vehicle that makes no sense on the faction that needs it the least. I'm hoping some sort of turret replacement module shows up that allows a dervish pilot to fly on their own with much more success. That's the end of the review. Thank you.